Acts, the fourth chapter, starting in verse 32 through 35. I have a lot to give you, so I'll go as far as I can go, and then we'll just continue. We'll just come back, come back next time. That's what we'll do. Acts, the fourth chapter, starting in verse 32, and it reads, And the multitude of them that, that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought, which means any, that ought or any of the things which he possessed was his own. That's really what I want to highlight there. No one said that anything that I have is just my own. But they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. No one lacked. One of the, pro one of the things that God told his people in Deuteronomy 28, he said, I'm going to bless you in the land that you're coming to. And it shall come to the place and to the point that there is no poor among you. That's what the word says. Everybody say, no poor among us. That was fulfilled in the Acts church, right? You see there, neither was there any among them that lacked. Because when you're poor, it means that you lack something. There's areas of deficiency in your life where needs aren't met. That's what it means to be poor. But the early church, there was great grace upon them. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For Why? For as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the prices or the profits of the things that were sold. And laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. It blessed me this week as I was, as we had a meeting, and, and I heard of some people who were, who I was just thanking some people who had really just generously given to our church, and, and, uh, and, and, and I heard, we heard stories of people who said they wanted to give at a certain level and ask God what to do, and God said, I want you to sell that car. I talked to one of our pastors, and he told me he was at one of our this is at one of our campuses. He went to see one of this one of the sisters. I'll I'll, I'll mention call her mother because he's in that age of the of the church. He went by to see, her and she said, "Pastor, don't worry about all that stuff you see over there. I know that looked like a bunch of junk." She said, "But I'm getting stuff together. The Lord told me to, that this is going to be my my super grace seed. I'm selling this stuff. See, it blesses me to hear that kind of stuff." That tells me people are all in, rather than just waiting to me. Well, I'll see what's going on, and if, if I got any money after vacation, I got, I'm planning to buy a new car, and if I got anything left, if I got, if I got anything left that week, I guess I'll get something. No, when you're, when you're all in, you plan to give. You anticipate this. You start praying, God, get it to me. You can get it through me. That's the kind of church that the early church was. And neither said any of them that any of the things which he had was his own. They had all things in common. Great grace, power of God came around that, on that church. Nobody lacked because if you had it, we had it. If we had it, you had it. If I got it, you got it. You got it, we got it. And so I want to speak today from the subject, is bigger than your money. It's bigger than your money. I've been, we looked before, we looked at the backdrop of, from Esther, book of Esther about Esther being a young girl who was put in the position of being the queen and uh, didn't want to risk her life to save a whole pe her people who were about to be exterminated. Another ancient day holocaust was about to take place. And our uncle Mordecai said, listen, you ain't that special. You're not going to get away, but you need to understand God's called you for such a, to the kingdom for such a time as this. And you're talking about I may perish. He said, but uh, you need to understand that it's bigger than just you. And so we looked at that and we said it's bigger than you to understand that we can't live selfless lives. Even as Mordecai had to get baby girl Esther to understand, Uncle Morty. Help both baby girl Esther to understand. And so I'm just, I'm taking this a little bit further this week and making it specifically about our money that is bigger than your money. The objective of this teaching series is to help us recognize selfishness. The objective of this series is to help us overcome selfishness. And the objective of this series, number three, is to help us be deliberate and intentional about being selfless. Rec first, recognize selfishness. Number two, overcome selfishness. 
And number three, be deliberate and intentional to be selfless. Sometimes my wife asks me to do something, and sometimes the first immediate response is a selfish response. You know, but and, and let, 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 me, let me help you. Some, some, sometimes if you want to get the right answer, you got to ask the question the right way. Okay, you want your husband to do something with you, you need to say, would you do such and such? Don't say, do you want to do it? See, you might get the truth if you, do you want? No, I don't want to do that. But if you ask me, will I? I'll do it. But, if, you, know, you know, my mother, again, it was a big deal. It was a big deal when I lived in a project as a kid. Okay, some of you don't know what these projects were like. They really, especially in the, in the city, these big, they, it's the, it, was a, it, it was a project. It was an experiment that did not work to take a whole bunch of poor people, particularly poor minority people, put them in one place, concentrate, consecrate them, concentrate, well, I wish they did consecrate us, concentrate us in one place where all you see is poverty and have no examples of people living outside of this, you start thinking everybody's like that. Okay, the same, the same thing could happen. It could be in a, in a poor, depraved country community if you don't get out of it. You think everybody lived like that. You think everybody got chickens in the house. You think everybody's screen doors hanging off. See, Un unless you get exposure to, to something more. But anyway, I, we lived on the 11th floor, eight buildings. We lived on the 11th floor. And uh, my mother would say to me, do you feel like going to the store for me? Well, going to the store meant going out of the building and about, uh, about a mile down the street. Do you, do you, do you want to? No, I want to go to the store for you. And so I, when I got a certain age, I started answering it. I started telling the truth. That didn't go over too good. <laughs> she, said, she said, do you feel like going to the store for me? I'm like, no, I don't feel like going to the store for you. you boy, you, if you don't get your blankety, 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 blankety. Okay. But so my wife, has, my, my, my first response sometimes is a selfless response. It's a selfish response. Uh, you know, you, you, you want to go to the store with me? You want to go here with me? And I'll say no. And then, but lately I'm saying, no, listen, I'll go just because you want me to go. That's being selfless. Not what I want, not my will, but thy will be done. I will lay down my life to go to the store for you, with you. Okay? There's nothing on the planet, y'all, that challenges our selfishness traits more than money. Nothing. Nothing on the planet. As much as some of y'all get uncomfortable when I talk about it, you thinking about it all the time, whether I talk about it or not. Most of us spend more time pursuing money than any other pursuit on earth. We spend more time pursuing money than we spend with our husband or wife. Oh, you think about it. We spend more money, more time pursuing money than we spend with our children. So it can be on your mind. We, everywhere we go, we're consumed with thoughts about your money, my money. It's my money, the commercial says, and I want it now. The woman says, Mr. Mr. Whatever, help me get a little, get, help me get some money. Took care of my expenses, and then just gave me some a little bit just to have some. <laughs> Y'all see that? And just get some money to have. I said, you better get your some money to have. <laughs> she realized I got this, but just good just to have a little something, something to have. Okay? We got all kinds of songs about money. Y'all know some of these songs. Let me see if y'all recognize any of these songs about money. Sit down, sit down. Y'all need to get saved. 
when I told him, I said, make, make sure you don't do more than 10 seconds of it because before y'all be in here dropping, oh, hey. Can't even get you to lift your hands and praise, but yeah. All these songs about money. We got movies about money. Wall, some of the biggest movies, Wall Street, The Wolf of Wall Street, Moneyball. I said Moneyball, not Monster Ball, <laughs> because y'all ain't supposed to watch that one. Moneyball, other people's money. Brewster's Millions, y'all remember that one? <laughs> all these are... All these things about money. We got all kind, of, all kind of books and some of the best books. Some of them, many, most of these books I highly recommend, but they're all about money. The Total Money Makeover. One of the biggest, best all-time sellers about money by Dave Ramsey. The Richest Man in Babylon. The Millionaire Next Door. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And since we're so surrounded by so much talk, Music, books, commercials about money, and since we spend more hours of the day pursuing it than anything else, without messages and sermons like I give and like today's message, we can start to think that life is merely about money. But I'm here to remind you that it's bigger than your money. People will uh, work for it, Overwork for it, lie for it, cheat for it, rob for it, sell their bodies for it, slide down poles for it, sell drugs for it, and even kill for it. Yet God says, hey, God, two and eight. God says, the silver is mine. The gold is mine. Is mine, saith the Lord. Now that's that 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 sounds very poetic. What God simply says, He said, money is mine. And as much as we use this concept, my money, God says the gold is mine, the silver is mine, saith the Lord. David said, he started recognizing. Dave says, David says in Psalms 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. At some point, we really got to get the right perspective and the right paradigm even about money. David writes this, getting a revelation that everything belongs to God and getting a revelation about stewardship. He says in Psalm 50, 10 through 12, for every beast of the forest is mine. This is God speaking here. Every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. God said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. God said, I don't need you. You need me. I got everything. I own everything. So, God says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, the gold is his, the silver is his, and yet we're consumed with this concept of my money. We're consumed with getting my money, keeping my money, saving my money, investing my money, spending my money, and David after he receives the offering, which is our scriptural base for our super seed, super grace seed, in this case, for this year, on April 24th, when I'm asking all the leaders to come forth and then the general congregation to follow, at least on the following Sunday, May 1st, David recognizes this, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 14, reading from the New Living Translation. After the people gave, he said, who am I? And who are my people that we could give anything to you? Now, you need to understand, for all, all the people got a problem of, of, of identifying with your cultural history. This is what David's doing right here. David said, we were slaves. We didn't have our own land. I'm a 
young. I came from a, 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 a I was a, a shepherd boy from a very average, some people even say poor family, taking care of a few sheep. And now you bless me to be the king, but here he's saying, you bless me to be able to prepare to build you a temple. You bless me to be able to give of my own to the temple. And now you bless all these people. This is after they had, everybody had given it and after the money's counted. He says, who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you. And we give you only what you first gave us. Come on, I, I, I want, us, want us to get this. Say, everything I have comes from God, and I give to God what he first gave me. See, that's the right perspective about money. That's the right perspective about our giving. Everything we have comes from him, and whatever we give is because he gave it to us. So it occurred to me, y'all, it occurred to me that if I want money, if I need money, what I really need is God, since it all belongs to him. See, see, my wife knew she won't need money, so she pursued me. That's how I'm going to tell this story, for the sake of illustration. Okay. okay. And for those who don't know, I didn't have pot no window. Okay. Some of y'all don't, what, what does that mean? Don't even worry about it. You fill in the blank. Pot, no wind, you, you fill in the blank. Okay? And my, my wife did not marry me for money. I didn't have any money, so I ain't going to call her no, no gold digger, but she didn't marry a, a broke person. So some people, y'all understand this, especially back in the day, people got connected to people because they figured if I got connected to them, I'll have. Okay. If I can marry into this family, I'll have. If I marry, if I, if I can connect with the royal family, I'll have connections and I'll have money. If I, if I can marry into the Rockefeller family, marry into the Bush family, you know, whatever, whatever family that you could say, dynasties or whatever, people felt if you got connected with them, then you would, wouldn't have any needs. If people can understand that about natural people, why can't you understand that by God? Well, you, don't, you, you don't need to pursue money. You need to pursue God. Are y'all lit? Since, every, since he owns everything. If I get Jesus and if I receive the Holy Spirit, I get everything he has. Jesus said this, John 16 and 15, as he says, all things that the Father have are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine and show it to you. He says, if you get me, you get a revelation of everything I have, and show also means give it to you. That verse from the Amplified says this, John 16 and 15, everything the Father has is mine. That is what I meant when I said that he, the Spirit, will take the things that are mine and will reveal, watch this, declare, disclose, and transmit it to you. When I get Jesus, when I get the Holy Ghost, everything that he has is mine. Y'all aren't catching this here. So it's bigger than your money. John 17, 22, Jesus is praying in the garden. This is the real Lord's prayer. And he says, Father, the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Glory, splendor, but it also means wealth. Everything that you've given me, I've given them that they may be one even as we are one. Paul later got the revelation, we are not just heirs of God, we are joint heirs with Christ. Meaning everything he has, I have. That's why when you really get a revelation of it, it's hard for you to really get a revelation, have an understanding that Jesus is rich and you're supposed to be poor. Now, he came to earth, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be made rich. He came to earth to make an exchange temporarily. 
And then when he raised, God raised him up, he restored, he said, Father, I'm praying that you restore to me the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the world, before I had to come down and put this earth suit on and be subject to like passions as me. But not only did God restore him, Okay, I'm catching this. Not only did God restore him to the place he was before he came to earth, now Philippians says God has highly exalted him. He gave him a promotion even over where he was because he became obedient even unto death. The glory which thou gave to me, I'll give to them. Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, he figured this out. And he came to understand it's bigger than my money. He won't let you know it's bigger than, quote, unquote, your money. Now, li listen to this. I'm reading quite a bit here. Ecclesiastes 5, 10 through 20. For the sake of time, I was going to read from King James. Let me go right to the New Living Translation. Ecclesiastes 5, 13 through 20, New Living Translation. Solomon said, now, now I've been living long enough to, uh, to find some stuff out. He said, there's another serious problem I've seen under the sun Hoarding riches harms the saver. Huh? Hoarding riches harms the saver. Wait a minute. I thought, I thought the more I, I saved, the better. He said, no, no, no. I discovered you can try to hold on to too much. Hoarding riches harms the saver. Money is put, money is put into risky investments that turn sour. And everything is lost. In the end, there's nothing left to pass on to one's children. We all come to the end of our lives as naked and empty-handed as the day we were born. That's where we get that you can't take it with you from. Say, so we take our riches, we can't take our riches with us. And this too, he says, is a very serious problem. This is a problem. People leave this world no better off than they came in. All their hard work is for nothing like working for the win. Now, y'all know I told y'all the preacher preach, used to preach all this all the time and say, you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. Okay, how much money you got, you can't take it with you. And, the, you know, this husband who just came to the church, he wasn't a believer, he just came to church because... His wife came to church and he wasn't believing just he, he tolerated the preaching, tolerated the church. He said, I'm sick of this preaching. Who we talking about? Can't take it with you, can't take it with you. He said, I'm taking mine with me. Told his wife, said, now, now you know I got hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank and investments. When I die, I want to put all that money in the casket with me. Put it all in there and make sure I have an open casket with security around it. And make sure the preachers see it. Put all that money in there. Tell me, can't take it with you. So, funeral going on. And everybody, if he told her his family, everybody's family, everybody's sitting there. They're sitting at the funeral and the casket's open. And so, her family starts saying, did, did you put that money in the casket? She said, yeah. He said, I gave him a check. And if he can cash it wherever he's going, he can have it. Can't take it with you. All their hard work, nothing like working for the wind. Verse 17. Throughout their lives, they live under a cloud frustrated, discouraged, and angry. Even so, now, this is all of Solomon looking back. He said, even so, I've noticed one thing, at least, that is good. It is good for people to eat, drink, and enjoy their work under the sun during their short life God has given them. And to accept their lot in life. And it is a good thing. I want you to see verse 19. It is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. He said, I recognize if you got wealth, it's because God gave it to you. If you got health, it's because God gave it to you. This is an older man who said, listen, I look back. I said, God, he said, God's been good to me. He's given me the wealth and he's given me the health. Y'all ain't no sense having wealth without health to enjoy it. Amen. 
He said, he's giving it to me. He said, then he goes on to say, to enjoy your work and accept your lot in life, this is indeed a gift from God. And then I love verse 20 from the New Living Trade. God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they take no time to brood over the past. Who are these people? These people recognize God, everything I got, God gave it to me. And I, I, I'm, just, I'm enjoying my life without guilt, without condemnation, because everything I have, God gave it to me. Glory to God. I'm not ashamed. I'm not hiding it. I give him the glory. I return unto him because you return unto me. It's bigger than my money. It's, my, it's about my big God. Everything I got, God's given it to me, and I'm going to enjoy it and praise him while I'm enjoying it. So in these verses, y'all, Solomon summarizes several things in these verses. Number one, he shows us, number one, money alone doesn't satisfy. Secondly, he shows us money brings more responsibilities and more people to help you spend it. I didn't, I didn't read that verse. I didn't read that verse. But, but that verse is Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 11. Then King James says this, when goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? He said, the more, sometimes the more money you got, the more, he said, uh, no, there's a script that says that, that wealth maketh many friends. He said, but, he said, but uh, somebody who's poor and has nothing, even his neighbor tries to stay away from him. That's, that's in Proverbs. So he says, money doesn't satisfy. Number two, he says, money brings more responsibilities and more people. I hope you spend it. Number three, he recognizes that not sharing it or hoarding it can end up hurting you. Number four, he tells us that you can't take it with you. Number five, he reminds us that it comes from God. And number six, he says, rejoice in your labor. And I want you to catch it because the Lord, Lord, Lord was dealing with me about this. Rejoice in your labor, not your money. Now, I did you catch this. Rejoice in your labor, not your money. Your labor is what you have done and what you've accomplished with your money. He said rejoice in what you've been able to do with your money. Now, all of us in here, particularly if you have been young and dumb, has anyone in here ever been young and dumb? How many of you are currently young and dumb? <laughs> How many of you are too, are too young to recognize that you're dumb? We've all been young and dumb. And when we were young and dumb, how many of us can think of something that we spent our money on when we were young and dumb that we, we have regrets about? Man, if I had that money, I spent all that money on that woman, and she was just using, girl, she was just using me. Lord, I smoked all that weed. Lord, if I had that money now, I bought that car that I couldn't afford. I put all this money, charge all this stuff on a credit card. We all have those kind of decisions because, so it's not the money. Sometimes you regret what you did with the money. God wants us to use our money in a way we have no regrets. I have no regrets. Y'all listen to me. I have no regrets that I spent money putting children through high school and college debt free. I have no regrets that I did some rough calculations that over the last 12 years I've sown, my wife and I have sown personally over a million dollars into the kingdom of God. I have no regrets about that. But I got some regrets about some other stuff. So my labor is what I've done with my money, not the money. See, it's not about the money, it's what you do with the money. Legacy is about it, pe people don't say, man, they earned all this money. They had all this money. No. People talk what you did with your money. That's what legacy is. Legacy is if you have money, what you do with your money. Now, the early church, they had God's perspective about money. The early church had God's perspective about wealth and riches. Acts 4.32, the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and with one soul, neither any of them said, it's my money and I want it now. None of them said of anything that he possessed was his own. 
Are y'all seeing this? They had all things common. If God blessed me, he blessed me to be a blessing. If God blessed me, he blessed me to help somebody else. So um, John says, in the epistle of John, he said, uh, oh, is, is it, yeah, believe, believe John. He said, he said, how dwell, he's, uh, I think it was James. He says, uh, he, he that shuts his bowels of compassion, when you see someone in need, how dwelt the love of God in you? And he said, closes or shuts down. In other words, God moves upon you to do something, you won't do it. It doesn't mean that every time you see anybody with a need, okay, <laughs> every time, <laughs> Some of y'all ain't gonna like this, but we were we were where we were riding. We were riding this somewhere, somewhere this week, and I saw a man, he had carried a sign. He carried a sign walking down, he said, I need a miracle. I said, Lord, give him a miracle. <laughs> That's what he said he needed. He didn't say he needed money. I did, I, I agree with him. Because you know he's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. Won't he do it? Will he won't? He carried a sign. Well, he said, I need a miracle. I said, Lord, give him a miracle. Now, on the other hand, we were in traveling one time on vacation, and a man was, homeless, man was sitting down there, and he had a sign. He said, I ain't going to lie. I need money for a beer. I said, yes, sir. He didn't lie. I wouldn't have gave him nothing. No, the man would not lie. He said, I ain't lie. He said, I need money for a beer. He had it right on the sign. Okay. What it means is if God speaks to you to help somebody, and you say, no, I ain't doing that. Because God ain't not necessarily going to speak every time. Come on. If, if, if every time you saw somebody, Lord Jesus, you, you ain't going to have no money on Super Seed Sunday. <laughs> Amen. So don't do that. You give to whom God tells you to give to. Early church understood this. See, y'all, when we come to really understand and believe that life is bigger than money, and e watch this, and even money itself is bigger than money, then we can really start living and giving as God desires us to live and give. Money is not about money. Money is about what you can do with money. That's why there's really no such thing as dirty money. It's dirty things you can do with money and dirty people who have money. Somebody said, I wouldn't receive that money. That's dirty money. I put it in my hand. I'll clean it right up for you and use it for good purposes. So we got to get God pers God's perspective. Look at Luke 12, 30, 13 through 35. Young man comes to Jesus. Of all the things he could be asking, there's a folk who came to ask Jesus about eternal life, and some people ask Jesus about healing their mother-in-law, and people ask Jesus about casting out demons, uh, people ask Jesus about healing his servant. This man said, Listen, if you can do something, I need to do something about this money situation I got here. Master, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Luke 12, 13. And Jesus said, man, who made me judge or divide over you? He said, I'm not a judge. I'm not a probate judge. This is not my business. And then, and then he said to them, he didn't even speak to the man and his brother. He talked to his side. He said, let, let me use this as a teaching moment. He said, let me, let me, I want you all to understand something. He said to them, take heed, pay attention, beware of covetousness or greed. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things that he possesses. He said, a man's life consists not in how much money and stuff he has. Because money is not even about money. It's bigger than your money. Money is about what you do with it. Money is about what you leave with it. Money is about who you help with it. Money is about what you contribute to with it. That verse from, from the uh, New Living Translation, Luke 12, 15, then he said, beware, God against every kind of greed. Everybody say every kind of greed. I like that because, see, some people are greedy. It ain't about money. Some people are greedy for power. Bishop Jacob Ritchie talked to me. He said, everybody wants, everybody, everybody wants affluence. If, if you get enough followers, you got affluence. If you get on a stage, you get affluence. People put on their resume, been on the stage with so-and-so, open up for so-and-so. Everybody want affluence. Uh, be associated with people's names. He said, instead of looking for affluence, you should be looking for influence. Influence is who you're affecting, 
who you were helping. A lot of people have affluence and no influence. He says here, life is not measured by how much you own. The message translation that verse says, speaking to the people, he went on, he said, take care, protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Life is not defined by what you have, even when you have a lot, the message translation paraphrase says. Life is not defined by what you have, even when you got a lot and you're Jenny from the block. Used to, have a, used to have a little, now I got a lot. That does not make you the person necessarily that God wants you to be just because you have a lot. So then what? Then, then, then if life's not about money, not, life's not about your money, and it's about more than money, what is life about? As I start wrapping this up. Number one, life is about pleasing God and fulfilling his purpose for our lives. Life's about what? Pleasing God and fulfilling his purpose for our life. Well, I, I really, 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 really have a concern, particularly about us as Af African Americans. Uh, and, and particularly our younger people today is because so much is driven by social media and everybody putting themselves out that they got this and they got that, and everybody is starting to compare themselves to people and things that they see on social media. Y'all realize we can't check the quality of the bag on social media. We can't authenticate it. Oh, y'all listening to me. Anything can look like whatever from afar. And it looks like everybody, they got this, and they have that, and they have this, and everybody starts comparing themselves, and people start feeling inadequate, and people start feeling less than, and people feel like I'm not accomplishing enough, people feel like I'm not doing enough, people feel like I haven't gone far enough, people feel like I haven't achieved enough, because they're simply comparing themselves to other people. I'm so glad, y'all, when I was coming along, I didn't have social media. I just ran my race. To this day, y'all, to this day, Preachers will call me from another country. Did you hear about so-and-so? You hear this? I said, listen, man, I'm on the wall. I'm trying to build with grace. I don't have time to figure out who's over here, what, what their new title is. <laughs> who's this and who's that and who's that and who, who got married, who got divorced. I'm busy keeping this together. So-and-so got divorced. Praise the Lord. Me and Moss are still together. Life's about pleasing him, fulfilling his purpose. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. So I have a concern that so many people today go after money and not about purpose. Life's about fulfilling what God wants you to do. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. He, uh, uh, Solomon says this. Solomon, yeah, Solomon says it. He said, Let, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said, at the end of the day, what's life about? Look at this. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. This is the whole purpose of life. This is the whole purpose for which you were born. Fear God, keep his commandments. Not to get money. Not merely just become a millionaire, billionaire, even though we confess those things and believe those things. The question is why? Fear God, keep his commandments. Because this is the whole duty of man, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. God's going to look at everything we did and say, how did that line up with my purpose for your life? God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good, whether it be evil. Amplified the verse says, all has been heard. The end of the matter is fear God, revere, worship him, knowing that he is and keep his commandment. For this is the whole this is the whole of man, the full origin of purpose for his creation, the object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of all happiness, the adjustment of all in harmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun, and the whole duty for every man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it is good or evil. I know you got a lot of money, but have you pleased God? I know you got degrees, but are you doing what God wants you to do? I know everybody knows your name, and they're giving you promotions, and they're giving you certificates, and they're giving you medals, and they're putting your name in the, and, and, and they're recognizing you on social media, but are you pleasing God? The message 
Paraphrase asks this, Ecclesiastes 12, 12 to 14, fear God, do what he tells you, and that is eventually God will bring everything we do out into the open and judge it according to its, in its hidden intent, whether it's good or bad. So that's, that's the purpose of life. Now, once I know the purpose of life, I really don't need money till I know the purpose of life. Otherwise, you'll abuse money. Now I know I'm supposed to please God. Now I can use money to help me please God. Now I can use money in the way that he wants me to do. Now I can pursue what he wants me to pursue. What's the purpose? So, so what's the purpose of money? The purpose of money, number one, is to live good. Now when I say live good, I'm not just talking about materially good. When I'm talking about living good, I'm talking about to live in accordance with God's word. People don't have money steal. People don't have money rob. Come on now. People don't have money and don't care how they get it, will sell their bodies. How many of y'all know that ain't living good? This ain't living? Marvin Gaye tried to tell us that. So he wants you to live good. Not just materially, that means being a person of moral character, being a person who pleases him. You need money to do what God's called you to do. So you seek him, not it. Let me say it again. I'm wrapping this up. I need money to pursue what God's called me to do. If God called me to build a church, I need money to build his church. I, I, I came to, 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 to settle that years ago when I was worried about raising my children. Really, I thought, she, why she keep having these babies like this so fast? Slow down, sister. Leave her brother alone. I'm trying to pay some rent. Kept having these babies. And then I, one time I started getting overwhelmed. How am I going to take care of these kids? How am I going to take care of these kids? How am I going to take care of these kids? And then I started reading, reading the scripture. A good man leaves inheritance to his children's children. Then I started reading the scripture. It said, he, not, he don't, that, that don't provide for his own is worse than an infidel. And I started realizing that ain't my heart. And if I please God, God got to help me please him. If the, if, if the word says a good man leaves inheritance to do his children, children, I just seek God to be a good man and God will call me to leave an inheritance. So I start taking the burden off of me. I said, God, you gave me these children because children are inheritance of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Blessed the man has his quiver full of them. God, if you gave them to me, then you're going to give me enough money to take care of them. Oh, come on. All I got to do is maximize my potential. Come on. All I got to do is maximize, be everything God called me to be. Do everything God calls me to do. Use every gift, every talent he's given me to maximize in my life and money cometh. Whoo, Jesus. Pastor Richard said something he was teaching a couple weeks ago. He said, he said, I'm too talented to be broke. Some of y'all need to get that revelation. I got too many gifts to be broke. Come on, when, when you recognize what God put in your hands, when you recognize what he's put in your head, when you recognize who he's connected you with, when you recognize that I can make something happen with what he's given me, you ought to say, I'm too, I, I'm too smart to be broke. I'm too anointed to be broke. I got too many gifts to be broke. Devil, you a liar. Poverty will not exist in my life. I got too much God, too much anointing, too much knowledge, too much wisdom, too much unction. To be broke. So I, I took the pressure off me. I said, God, you want me to be a good father, and I want to be a good father. And since you want me to be a good father, I want to be a good father. You want to enable me to do and fulfill everything the scripture says a father's supposed to do. So you need money to do what God's called you to do. You don't have to seek it. You seek him. Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Oh, boy. And, I, and I'll end with this point. Number one is to live good. Matthew 6, 31 through 33. So Jesus says this. Take no thought saying what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, where we shall be clothed. He says stop focusing on money. That's what he's saying there. Verse 32. For all, after all these things, the Gentiles, the sinners, those who don't know God, those who don't have godly priorities, those outside the covenant, covenant they worry about those things. For your Heavenly Father knows what you need to be a good mother. Your Heavenly Father knows what I need to be a pastor. 
Your heavenly father knows what you need to be a good father. Your father knows what you need to be a good husband. Uh, don't focus on the money. Focus on him. Money cometh in him. All the gold is mine. All the silver is mine. Watch If you seek my heart, I'll give you my hand. You have your father knows you have need these things. Seek first. Seek what? First. Seek what? First. Get your priorities right. Seek first. Put him first. God, I want to please you more than I want to raise. I want to please you more than I want this position. I want to please you more than I want a bigger house. I want to please you more than I want anything else. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things, all these things that money is going to bring, all the byproducts of money is going to be added unto you. I got a praise report, y'all. I bought my wife a Peloton trade. I really, and I'm, I'm planning on using this one too because you know, walking get boring, but you got people to help you and they tell you stories and, and show you, and, and you can close it. You, you walk around England and stuff. So this should be a little easier. But we finally got to that. I bought it, I bought it as a Christmas gift in December, and I ordered it around the 15th because I figured it'd be there by never. And so then it, it, so I ordered it around the 10th. It, it arrived around the 5th, 15th, and we've had problem after problem after problem. The thing was, first, first it was just a minor thing. Then they sent three people back. Oh, geez, it was, it's just been awful. And finally, finally yesterday, finally brought a complete new one, and there was a problem with that one first. I said, they said, Mr. Man, I'm so sorry. I said, no, we, you're getting out of here today. We, some kind of way we're going to get, and so the, we, we got it working. But young man came in. He told me he going to maybe be out of sex. So he came in, and I, they came down the base of my house where my, where my um, man cave is, and I by my pool and came and walked him back. He ain't been through the whole house. He just walked in. He walked around back, looked at the pool. He looked in. He looked around and saw my my artwork and stuff like that, you know. And uh, then he walked into our, our exercise room, looked around there. He said, uh, I said, all right, y'all good. He said, uh, sir, can I ask you a question? How you get all this? He said, how, how'd you get all this? And I, you know, I could, you know, you know he, he got to be here 10 years to forget the full message about how to get them. <laughs> but, I, I, but I started here, I said, little by little, that's what I said. I said, little by little. I said, my concern, he's looking at a young man, maybe he's in the early 20s, maybe 25. I said, my concern with you young people today, you want it all at one time. I said, we can get to all this at one time. I said, got it little by little. I said, the first thing, I said, this is my fifth house in 25 years. Now, I know some of y'all got more faith than me. Just make the leap to the million dollar house immediately. Okay? That's where we are now. That's not where I started. We did it little by little. We were counting this morning, as including the first house we rented, that was six in 25 years. Okay? But I said, little by little. I said, which means, I said, you got to start with home ownership. I said, wealth in America starts with home ownership. I said, but let me tell you this. I said, but let me back up before home ownership. I said, in order to get home ownership, you got to manage your credit. You got to get a decent credit scores. Then I start, I talk, so I start talking about how we manage your credit. I told him how to get a, about having a credit card. I said, if you get a credit card with a $10,000 limit, don't, don't, don't charge up $10,000. Charge up, maybe use three. And if you can, don't just live this life. And I start talking about little things. My, everybody say little by little. And so everybody wants, some people want everything at one time. The Bible says, seek ye first kingdom of God is righteous, and all these things shall be what? Hey. Add it. Add it. Little by little. Let me, that verse from New Living Translation, Matthew 6, 31 through 33, got to quit. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Oh, my God. These things dominate the thoughts of who? Somebody shout, I'm a believer. So I ain't worried about these things. <laughs> How did say it again? Say, I'm a believer. So I don't have to worry about these things. Oh, come on, say it one more time. I'm a believer, so I don't have to worry about these things. 
be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day, all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. I ain't worried about these things. Whoo, Jesus. Hey! He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. He's a good, good father. He will, he will take care of you. I'm not worried about anything because he will take care of me. Be not dismayed. Stop worrying. Stop fretting. Stop overworking yourself. Stop stressing out. Stop giving up. Stop caving in. Stop quitting. Stop stressing. Stop worrying. He will. He will take care of you. God will. God will. Oh, yes, He will. I'm a living witness that God will take care of you. David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. Never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I was young, I was dumb, didn't know what I know now. But now that I know, I made up my mind, I'm not worried about the future for I know who holds the future my life is in his hand all I got to do live like he tells me to live seek first the kingdom of God acknowledge the Lord in all my ways make my life a living example be light to the world and he will he will take care of me. Oh, y'all can go home if you want now. I done preach myself happy. I'm a living witness that you don't have to have it today. That don't mean it's not coming tomorrow. As I close today, I want somebody to know that help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way God will provide he's arranging something on your behalf right now something that you don't know why you went through that but God's back in the kitchen he's working something out he's putting the ingredients together he's taking the things that you didn't know why you went through and he's mixing that with purpose in your life he take that little seed here and mix it with the big seed there and he's worked it out and he's stirring it up and he's about to present a table for you in the presence of your enemies and he gonna let you see that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord I'm too blessed I got too much hope Slide. God get ready to bless me. God get ready to cause something to show up that's invisible right now. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things God has in store for them that love him. You got to stop looking at what's around you. Look beyond what you see and say God is working something for me. Look at somebody says it's about to show up any minute. It's about to manifest. It's going to be harvest time. We've been sowing. We've been praying. God is sending the rain. Rain on me. Rain on me. Let some drops fall on me. Shine on me. Shine on me. Let the light, let the light, let the light from the lighthouse shine. 
about my big God. He's a big God. Bigger than your problems. Bigger than your bills. Bigger than your worries. Bigger than your cares. Bigger than your debt. Bigger than your sickness. Bigger than your problems. God is a big, 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 God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Money's the least of my problems. I got a big God. He's a good father. He provides. He cares. He nourishes. He's El Shaddai. The God of more than enough. He's Jehovah Jireh. My provision shall be seen. He's Jehovah Rapha. My healing shall break forth. He's Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace, the God of might, the God of miracles, the God of ways, the God of power, the God of ability. He is a big, 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 big God. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I get joy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. Makes me shout when I think about what the Lord has done for me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Jesus still sits on the throne. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody ought to give him a praise. Somebody ought to give him a shout. It's bigger than your money. You serve the God who owns everything. Oh, you don't know like I know. Oh, you don't know like I know. 
see God bigger than all your money problems. It's bigger than your money. It's about your big, big God. Woo! Oh, I feel something broke in this house. Something broke in this place. Somebody got free in this place. You done freed your mind from care. You freed your mind from worry. Excuse me, I wasn't planning on doing this when I sat by you this morning. But I got to thinking about how big my God is. light I can't help but holler. I can't help but scream. If I could say a word, I wave my hand. But I got to let my God know that He burned them all my praise. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Ko raba ha sa tararama ha. Rama mando ko releche. She te raba kanda rara bohonga. Yarara mama mando ko se. She te raba ka. Rama mama mama boso to. She te raba kande raba ha. Rama mama deke. Shiraba so todama Rama mande deke Shitera raba ha Yanda raba raba ko raba Seta raba ka Mama 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 mande she My soul Doth magnify the Lord My soul Doth magnify the Lord Glory to God. Hallelujah. 